Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, and poetry enthusiasts. Welcome to this evening, which I think is going to be a memorable one, if not historic, in the club calendar. For this evening, perhaps for the first time in the recent past, we gather to listen to a poet who will deliberate upon a scintillating issue, poetry, heroism against hegemony. Ladies and gentlemen, as Shubhad Babu has been adequately introduced in our communications, I'm not going to repeat the same words. But let me tell you, it is both an honor and privilege to stand before you today to introduce a literary luminary whose words have woven themselves into the very fabric of our cultural consciousness. Shubhad Sharkar's poetry is not merely a collection of verses. It is a profound exploration of the human experience. His words possess the rare alchemy of capturing the essence of life, love, and the myriad emotions that color our existence. Though his eloquent verses, through his eloquent verses, Sarkar has painted the vivid landscapes of the soul inviting readers to traverse the realms of the introspection and contemplation. A distinguished professor, editor, and cultural critic, Shubhad Sarkar has not only contributed significantly to the world of literature, but has also been a torchbearer for social and cultural discourse. His poetry is a mirror reflecting the complexities of a society, and his keen observations serve as a catalyst for dialogue and change. As you prepare to delve into the insights and musings of Shubhad Sharkar, let us open our hearts and minds to the transformative power of his words. His poetry has the ability to transcend boundaries. I mean it. His poetry has the ability to transcend boundaries, to resonate across diverse backgrounds, and to ignite the flame of inspiration in the hearts of those who seek meaning in the written word. Following his speech, our very own Choitali Moitro will be driving the conversation. Also, the participation from the audience is most welcome. In fact, I request all of you to question him, put forward the questions. Without further ado, I invite you to join me in welcoming the distinguished poet, Shubhad Now may I now request Chaitali also Chaitali Moitu to take your seat to the left of Shubhud. Good evening everyone. I think uh, Ashokda is going to uh, present a memento to, how shall I address him? Uh, the poet Shubhad Sharkar, I think he's an enigma. It's difficult to address an enigma, but that is from the club. And this is the book of pain. Oh, request to write poetry with this. Let's hope more and more poems come out. Right. Uh, <laughs> right, so we are here today to spend some time listening to a poet, I'm sure, listening to some of his poems, and uh, maybe discuss certain insights which he feels is uh, important for poetry writing. And uh, if you look at the topic of today, heroism against hegemony, I'm just trying to roll the conversation, leaving 
the most important motives to Shubhuddha. I was just uh, thinking, Shubhuddha, that there is, a, there is an inherent irony in this topic, heroism and hegemony. Would you like to please introduce the topic your way? Namaskar. Uh, Ashok, thank you so much for your kind words. And uh, I would like to uh, keep the paper that you, that you read from in my pocket for a long time. And it's going to be a big certificate for me. And I'm really surprised that this is for the first time any poet is uh, speaking in this room. It's, it's, it's a library room, right? It's a reading room. Uh, Sports lounge, and uh, mm, uh, yes, of course, uh, poetry is a part of sports, and uh, uh, so I, I, I think that uh, the way Ashok has spoken about me, I'm really, um, I'm humbled, and I feel honored that uh, what you have said, and I think that I'm uh, uh, Thank you so much. <clears throat> the first thing that I would like to ask, Ashok was, you know, he was asking me again and again for an abstract of the speech, like an academician. So, okay, fine, I said that I will send you an abstract, a very s small one, smaller, shorter than this speech he has made on me. And uh, I think that it is still with them. I'm not going to read it out to you, but I will, I will have some points from that uh, um, uh, abstract. So the first thing, uh, so how heroism and hegemony uh, diametrically opposite to each other. But at the same time, there is an inherent irony as quote unquote that as you have mentioned i think that uh, this is poetry if there is no inherent irony in a speech in a talk in an affair of love in a state affair and this irony is very very important even in medical science as patient i have realized so i feel that irony is everywhere we cannot live without irony. And in poetry, we have that kind of historical irony, contemporary irony, and also irony that comes from even from the sense of divinity or from a sense of protest. So the first thing that I would like to tell you clearly that I have been writing poems for the last 45 years. When I started writing poetry, there was no poetry in my life. There was no book of poems in my family. My father migrated, in fact, I should, this is a big word, migration, a part of the migration which took place in this subcontinent, and that is the largest migration in the world. It's continuing for more than 70 years. So you just imagine a young father and a young mother They were just 30, 32, 33 years old. Maybe my mother was younger, uh, maybe five years younger. And they ran and they ran and they ran and ran and finally uh, crossed the border and settled in a village. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a place just outside uh, the district town called Krishnagar. So you just imagine I, there was no Tigor or no Zrul in my home. And I, I couldn't think about Shakespeare or Jivananda at that time. So the irony is that I have taught Shakespeare for more than 35 years in my life. So irony is everywhere. We cannot live without irony. And, you know, very recently I I was in London just a month before, and I, uh, I visited London so many times. But this time, for the first time in my life, I visited Shakespeare's place, that is Globe Theatre. I was 
very carefully studying the structure which I read. As a student, then as a teacher, I read and taught. I mean, the Indian students, the Bengali students. So I was studying the structure and I thought that there was a man who was almost a half man. If you, if you see the picture of the film, the movie called Shakespeare in Love, you find that he is a mad guy, you know, terribly in love and he doesn't, uh, and most, most of the English men don't believe in that kind of exposition, you know, that kind of picturization of his life. But I was thinking that the irony is who used to visit the Globe Theatre? Most of them used to come to Globe Theatre with a bottle of rum or whiskey or beer, just to spend time. And they used to, if, if, if the play doesn't click in 10 minutes, they used to throw the bottles. Maybe sometimes they, even Shakespeare himself was a hit. And we just, we, after 400 years, what an irony, that we take him as the pearls of human wisdom. Hamlet, Macbeth, King Lear, they are the examples of human wisdom at its highest. So the, my point is now, a poet is a lonely man not just sitting by his window, but even if you throw him into the people of Brigade Parade Ground just behind us, even I feel still he is alone. He is a lonely man, like a standalone building, but he has a heroism. He is a fighter, a loner, but a fighter. He is a loner in multitudes. He is a loner when many people gather around him, when he's signing a book, when he's standing for selfies, when he's responding to the people, blah, blah, blah. But I feel deep down his heart, he's quintessentially a man more introverted than anything else. You know, we, we, we the poets, we have a bad habit to say, oh, no, you know, Shanku Ghosh is really an in, introverted poet, and Shunil Gangopadha is not. Pablo Neruda is very, very, uh, you know, outside man. So interior man is in like Verlaine, like Rabo, like Baudelaire. So we, I don't believe in such categories. I believe that a poet, maybe he is a poet for masses, like Neruda or like Nazrul. But if we read carefully, closely, we find there is an irony that he is into the mass, but at the same time, he's absolutely quiet with himself. And when he writes, especially when he writes, he feels, maybe he feels, many, 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 many poets have written in their diaries that they have a feeling that a shadow, a shadow is looking over his shoulder to see what he's writing. It happened in Russia during the time of Stalin. But I believe that it is a kind of, a the name of Stalin has came to my mind. I feel, you know, it's not just a fight or a war with a shadow. Chaya Shonge Juddha Kore Gatri Holo Vatha, wrote that. We are, I am not talking about that. It's not the shadow. It's, it's, it's the man standing somewhere. You don't know him. You don't recognize him. You, but any time, any dictate can change your life. Any decision taken by him, the man who is not clear, maybe uh, standing in fog, maybe uh, in, in a nebula stage, but you find that any dictate, any letter, any decision from him can change the fate of the country and can also change the fate of a poet. What happened in just a few weeks, not a few weeks, two, three weeks ago, a young poet, a very young poet, very promising poet, was killed. It is 
in Gaza. So it is the Palestinian and the Israeli war, and he is in between. So he was the target, a young boy, and who was going to speak what most of the people were afraid to. But he said what he was not supposed to say. He wrote what he was not supposed to write, but he did it. And finally, just two weeks before, and there, there, is, there is a headline all over the world that yeah, I have forgotten his name, I should not. But I feel that he was a target. So he fought against, like, I should say, Boris Pasternak in Russia. Boris Pasternak in Russia, he fought with that man. And he also, this young man, this young poet, who was killed, who was murdered. I should, I should not say kill or murder. These are not the right words for him just to pay tribute to him, to his soul, I should say that he was assassinated. Like a king, like a queen, like an emperor, like a president, like, uh, uh, like, 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 like prime minister, whatever it is. A poet who was not killed, I should say, he was assassinated. It was an airstrike at that time. And you know, a so bombing was going on, and finally he could not escape, and he was one of the targets. So I feel that his writing is fighting. His writing is war. He did not participate in the war, but he fought as a lone man, as an individual, as a poet. And he said in his final words that I don't know what I did. And I, I guess that I am going to be killed. So I think what the, the subject that I have today, and uh, I am already into it, and, and I believe that uh, every poet, each and every poet, is a lone man. I don't say lonely. Loneliness and Sorry. aloneness are different. Jivanananda Dash was, to some extent, an extremely lonely personality. A man who really uh, loved to be, I know, indoors, to be inside his room. Not that much outside. So this inside and outside, again, this kind of binary is also a kind of inherent irony, as you said. And that inherent irony is possibly the source of writing. That was brilliant, Shubhadda. I would just um, I like to say, to repeat almost what you have said, that uh, you are trying to differentiate, uh, not differentiate, maybe, maybe bring together aspects of loneliness and solitude, isn't it? And at this point, when we talk about uh, loneliness, so many poems spring to my mind, starting from Sonnet 29, going to Daffodils, Lime Tree Bower, so many. I'm sure all of us are thinking. So my mind is at the moment with the poem by Shubhuddha called Bhalo Jai Gata Kothai. I would yeah. love him to please read that poem. You know, this poem, uh, thank you very much. I'm going to read uh, this poem. I have... Uh, I have both, I mean, uh, the translation and the original with me. So this poem I wrote as already we have a reference to Russia. Uh, this poem I wrote, this, this poem in Bengali it is called Bhalo Jai Gata Kothai. In English this translation is done by Caroline Brown, an American poet. She did it long, long ago. Uh, and I'm going to read it out, then I will. Uh, tell you why did I write this poem and what really prompted me to be into this poem. And um, just one touch is that uh, uh, my son was only three years old. And I wrote this poem one Sunday 
afternoon. He was rather annoyed and annoying me, just after a nap. And um, it's, a, it's a dialogue between me and my son. But the reference is just after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And uh, it's, it can be a poem of regret. It can be a poet based on dialogue between father and son. But deep down into it, I'm not talking about the history. I'm not talking about the Stalin. I'm not talking about Boris Pasternak, how he was tortured by him, nothing. But it's just a dialogue between uh, father and son. And three year old he was at that time when I wrote this poem. And he is now uh, doing PhD in America. So <laughs> it's again irony, a kind of irony again. So where is the good place? I When he got up from his nap, my three-year-old son said, Papa, will you take me to a good place? Surprised, I looked at the three-year-old, at three-year-old eyes, three-year-old lips at trickling drops of sweat. I said, go and get the zoo. The lion has gotten very hungry. The tigers chase the deer. He said, no, take me to a good place. He went to the next room, cried a bit, came back with a tattered curl marks calendar and said, we will take this grandpa too, by train, by boat. Hey, Papa, Papa, won't you go to a good place? When I took him to Victoria, he said, no, this is no good. When I took him to the Ganga, he said, it's only a river. When I gave him ice cream, he walked along winning. Disgusted, I took him home around eight and saw tattered curl marks lying abandoned on the floor. I told my son, this grandpa said, he would take us to a good place too. That Sunday, there was no train, no boat. Quiet for a moment, who knows what. He began winning again. I gave him a ball, I gave him a robot, I gave him a ship. Right when I was about to give him a spanking, he asked me the old time big question. Hey, Papa, tomorrow, will you take me to a good place tomorrow? ভালো জায়গাটা কোথায় দুপুরে ঘুম থেকে উঠে আমার তিন বছরের ছেলে বলল বাবা আমাকে একটা ভালো জায়গায় নিয়ে যাবে আমি চমকে তাকালাম তিন বছরের দিকে তিন বছরের চোখের দিকে তিন বছরের ঠোঁটের দিকে ফুটে ওঠা বিন্দু বিন্দু ঘামের দিকে আমি বললাম যা তো চিড়িয়াখানাটা নিয়ে আয় সিংহটার খুব খিদে পেয়েছে বাঘটা তারা করেছে হরিণকে সে বলল না আমাকে একটা ভালো জায়গায় নিয়ে চল পাশের ঘরে গিয়ে একটু কাঁদল বন্দুক চালালো তারপর কোথা থেকে কার্ল মার্ক্সের একটা ছেঁড়া ক্যালেন্ডার এনে বলল এই দাদুটাকেও নিয়ে যাব ট্রেনে করে নৌকো করে এই বাবা বাবা একটা ভালো জায়গায় যাবে ভিক্টোরিয়া নিয়ে এলাম 
সে বলল না এটা ভালো না গঙ্গার ঘাটে নিয়ে এলাম সে বলল এটা তো একটা নদী আইসক্রিম ধরিয়ে দিলাম সে ঘ্যান ঘ্যান করেই চলল বিরক্ত হয়ে আটটা নাগাদ বাড়ি ফিরে দেখি তখনও মেঝেতে গড়াগড়ি খাচ্ছেন ছেঁড়া কাল মাক্স ছেলেকে বললাম শোন এই দাদুটাও আমাদের একটা ভালো জায়গায় নিয়ে যাবে বলেছিল সেই রবিবারে কোনো ট্রেন ছিল না নৌকো ছিল না মিনিট দুয়েক চুপ কি ভাবল কে জানে তারপর আবার ঘ্যান ঘ্যান বল দিলাম রোবট দিলাম জাহাজ দিলাম চর বসাব কিনা ভাবছি তখনই পৃথিবীর সবচেয়ে কঠিন প্রশ্নটা সে করল এই বাবা কাল একটা ভালো জায়গায় নিয়ে যাবি তো কাল বিস্ময় করার ব্যাপার একটা একটা স্মৃতি মনে পড়ে গেল যে শনিবারে এই কবিতাটা বেরিয়েছিল তখন শনিবার শনিবার দেশ পত্রিকা বেরোতো সেই শনিবারে সকালবেলায় তো আমরা সব দেশ পড়ে ফেলতাম তখন একটা অন্য ব্যাপার ছিল তখন তো এত সব ছিল না ইন্টারনেট টিন্টারনেট এসব তাই সন্ধেবেলায় লন্ডনে ঢুকছি তখন তখন বুদ্ধদেববাবু মুখ্যমন্ত্রী হননি জ্যোতিবাবু মুখ্যমন্ত্রী বুদ্ধদেববাবু ঢুকছিলেন দেখেই বললেন আপনার কবিতাটা খুব ভালো লেগেছে আজকে আমি খুব অবাক হয়ে গেলাম আমি ভেবেছিলাম একটু বকা খাবো ওর কাছে অবাক করে দিয়ে উনি বললেন যে আপনার কবিতাটা খুব ভালো লেগেছে আসুন ভেতরে আসুন গেলাম এই স্মৃতিটা আমার কবিতাটা পড়া হলেই আমার এই স্মৃতিটা মনে পড়ে so the abstract that you all have been hearing uh, just now from shubhoda was sent to me by ashokda just a few days ago and uh, i could see the tip of the iceberg that you see sitting in right of me and the second point in that uh, abstract is if i'm not mistaken about religion and how religion yeah. is used as a trope so if ashokda uh, shubhoda please ela- sort of elaborates on that <laughs> his uh, example is uh, mahmud darish the poet and uh, just to give you a little footnote which you can find out online he said that fateh and hamas are factional violence and quote unquote suicide attempt in the streets so this can trigger off a series of thoughts sparks especially from a poet so anything on this line please in fact in this part of my abstract uh, possibly it's more difficult area especially in india now that i have been writing poems against the business of religion the kind of uh I am not against the divinity. No poet can be against the divinity. If I am against divinity, then I have to reject Rabindranath. The greatest example is Rabindranath. Gita Bithanet, Praj Shabgan, Praj Shabgan, Amun ki Shadeshpat jayar gaano, divinity ke sparsha kore aache. Divinity maane sharashuri tar taanoi. Divinity na amun akta manusher monther akta spiritual, একটা সারস্বত বোধ সেটা কাজ করে আই রট পোয়েমস এগেনস্ট ইন দ্য টাইম অফ গুজরাট আই মিন দ্য রায়ট ইন গুজরাট অ্যান্ড আই রোট এগেনস্ট আই মিন ইট ওয়াজ ইট ওয়াজ ইভেন বিফোর দিস পোয়েম আই স্টিল রিমেম্বার ওয়ান পোয়েম দ্যাট আই রোট ইট ওয়াজ আফটার the what happened in ayodhya in 92 on 6th december and i wrote poems when i 
I was terribly shocked by what was happening in uh, Kashmir. And also the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the conflict, the conflict between India and Pakistan, again, which is a, a part of a kind of uh, business, I believe. Business which may be political, maybe religious, or maybe otherwise. Administrative, a lot of, lot of areas are there. So I, I have a poem which I want to read now. The one which is against the killing of a poet, assassination of a poet. It's just what I said and what happened two weeks ago there in the war field. But there was no war field when Tukaram, a great poet of Marathi language, 400 years ago, that it is because that he was Shudra. So Shudra was not allowed to write any poems. So he was killed by the Brahmins. So it's caste, it's religion, a lot of things. And we think about Kabir. And Tukaram was murdered even when he, he, he was very young at that time. Even not 40. 38, right. You were absolutely. Yeah, you are absolutely right. And then he was 38. And he was murdered. And you just imagine that Tukaram's poems, uh, within 100 years, became the foundation of the modern Marathi language. It just, just like Lalon, for example. The Lalon became a, a, a part of our consciousness. It's linguistically, culturally, and also I believe that, you know, it's, a, it's what we are. It's of what we are today, the collective consciousness. So in a way, I, I, I wrote this poem because I thought, and I have so many poems against that kind of religion which is used, or rather which is abused, against a man, against a woman possibly more against women and children than against men, at least in this part of, uh, our, uh, in this part of uh, the subcontinent, uh, I mean, in India. So I wrote this poem. I thought that uh, I, 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 was, I was in Madhya Pradesh, in Bhopal, attending a World Poetry Festival, which was you know, organized by uh, the Department of Culture and Tourism at that time, and Ashok Bajpayee is a great Hindi poet. He was behind the whole thing. So we had poets from all over the world. And, uh, you know, uh, that time I was very young and my head was, you know, completely, you know, preoccupied with the poets like Nikanur Parra, uh, you know, whom I admired terribly, you know, who recently died uh, at the age of 103, 103 years old here, he died. Most of the poets died young in the, in the history of mankind, but he died uh, after completing his hundred. And uh, he, he, very interesting to tell you that he shut the door when he completed 100 years and said that I am not going out from my house because he knew that if he is outside, and it, it will, he will be mobbed. And he didn't want that, you know. And his name was uh, on, on, the, on the Nobel Committee, uh, you know, desk for... 13 times, but he was never given. Anyway, it, it made him more famous than he was, in fact. And I believe that he, 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 he was, I, I was spending my days with him, you know, uh, as many as seven days, and he, he changed my, um, I should say, uh, the world view, I'm looking at the world, how a poet, an Indian poet, a young Indian poet, looking at the world. So that kind of, you know, um, exposure I got from him. So. But my, though it was occupied with a lot of international things, but finally a part of my head was totally focusing on the terrible date I was reading about him at the, at the time in Bhopal. So it was 30 years ago, and I was reading about him, and that terribly you know, influenced me. And I wrote that poem in, uh, while I was in Bhopal, 
at my hotel. So I want to read it out first. Tukaram. Marathi Brahmonera Apra Tinsho Kobita Pathor Mede Nodir Jole Pele de Bolichilo Shudro Shudre Mutunta Kobita Likaratu Jokun Shok Brahmon who is on Malay Partish Kinto Shara Maharashtra Manus Vishashkare Apra Tinsho Kobita Ag Bachor Bade Jol Tikimtesh. एक की ब्राह्मण को ना एक बार शॉप ने देखे चिलो आप लाके बिचना यूटे बोशे ते शेतार शामी के जोड़ी ये धोले बोले फिर लो जानो के ऐसे चिलो शॉप ने तू कहाँ शेही राते शामी नोटुन बो के बेदाम पीटिए बारिश के पेड़ कोड़े गए मेटी की पेड़ चिलो अपना ग्रामे पहुँचोते এই মেটি মারাঠি ভাষার প্রথম মহিলা কবি তুকারাম আপনার কবিতা জল থেকে উঠে এসেছিল কিনা জানি না তবে মেটি স্বামীর হাতে মার খেয়ে বাড়ি ছেড়েছিল সে চোখ বন্ধ করে মুখস্থ বলতো আপনার 300 কবিতা 38 বছর বয়সে তুকারাম আপনাকে হত্যা করা হলো কিন্তু ব্রাহ্মণেরা একটা ছোট সত্যি বুঝতে পারিনি সেদিন কবিতার পাণ্ডুলিপি জলে ফেলে দিলেই কবিতা ডুবে যায় না uh, the last uh, point of the abstract that uh, uh, Shubuddha shared with us, I'm sure he's thinking a lot more than what the abstract is saying. But uh, since we are going with those points, the last one would be on the aggression in Monipur, Shubuddha. So if you want to say anything, you can. But there are galores of questions waiting for you, I can understand. So. As the abstract has that point, yeah, yeah. I thought of uh, reminding and you. Possibly, I, uh, as I described in my abstract, if I correctly remember, that possibly this is the highest form of uh, terribility, if I'm allowed to use this word, uh, the kind of, the highest form of uh, hegemony, that is army the most army, soldiering, the most powerful, the most organized, the cruelest. And at the same time, protecting the borders, protecting us from our enemies, absolutely fine. And this is again, uh, I should say, you know, it, it, it's, it's built in it, inside. So, it, it's not that, you know, when, when the body of a soldier is carried in coffin to us, we shed tears. Even I have, I have almost tearful poems against, uh, against you. Remember that uh, the particular, the, those, those, those who were brought in coffins, you know, from Kashmir to uh, Kolkata, maybe, for, uh, maybe in a village. So I wrote tearful poems at the time. But this time, it's absolutely different. That what I have already described as the highest form of hegemony. So it's military, militarism, a bad kind of, you know, uh, I should say, the hegemony. And at the same time, most of them are believed to be that they, as they're supposed to be, doing good for the country, doing good for us, doing good for citizens. But it didn't happen like that in Munipur, in Kashmir, and also in other places. 
Even I still remember when my, the, the, the protectors of the border, you just imagine as I gave you the narrative, I mean, I, mean, I mean the anecdote of my mother and father crossing the border. Then they were also, you know, you know in a way they, they were stopped, intervened, questioned, interrogated, and insulted. So it is there in my family. And when we think about the atrocities of the military protecting us, so it's not irony at the same time. So it's, that is where we, you know, we, are, we know and we cannot act. We are helpless. So you just think about the 14 mothers, as many as 14 mothers. They all came out of their kitchen and stood naked as a protest against the atrocities of the military, of the Indian army. And when Monoroma was lifted, Monoroma, the young girl who was lifted from her heart, from her uh, place, from her home, and she was raped. And you know the story. The whole world came to know this story. And so the mothers who came and stood in front of the Ashram Rifles headquarters, standing naked for the first time in the history of India, standing naked, 14 mothers, for the first time in the history of in, not only India, rather, I checked it with the world history that it was for the first time that so many mothers came out and protested against the atrocities of the military and they stood naked and with the banner, still you remember, many of you can remember, it was, it was printed all over the world, with the banner they were uh, the banner who, which said that Indian army rape us. It was terrible. I thought that my mother was also standing with them. Standing with the 14 mothers of Manipur. So that night, it was, it was uh, terrible for me. And uh, I had a telephone call from Imphal from my friend Ibam Chashing, who was also a a Shaita Academy winner in Monipuri language. So, and you know, for example, Monipur, you know, is now emerging as a land of poetry. They are writing beautiful poems. Just you check with uh, Penguin Indian books, you will find their poetry. They are writing really, really good poetry. So it happened like that. So that night I felt that it is terrible. And finally, the lonely man is writing. The lonely man by the side, or maybe in the dark room, half-lit room, writing is his fighting at the same time. It's like a war, jo war zone. And, you know, it's not directly into the field. It's not into, he is not into it. But he can feel the heat of it. You know, when, you know, as Pablo Neda, for example, that he, he was a great poet, he was highly respected in his own country and also elsewhere, I mean, all over the world, he got Nobel Prize and uh, he mesmerized young, when we were young, young people like us, you know, all over the world, across the world. But you know, when the three murderers of Trotsky, Possibly this is the information I am giving you for the first time in, in public. I have written about it, but in public I am speaking about that. I admire Pablo Neruda terribly, you know. He's like my father. I, I worshipped him uh, as a young, uh, young aspiring writer. And still, uh, till death, I, 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 I got inspired by him. But you know, when I came to know it is because of the hegemony that he was forced and he was requested by Stalin to, not directly by Stalin, but you have information. So you can check it on uh, uh, internet. You will find the essay. So what happened that it's a great man like Pablo Neruda, because of hegemony, the hegemony that I have been speaking today. Because of that, because, because of the power politics, he was asked, Pablo Neruda was asked to issue, because he was, at that time, he was the ambassador 
Chilean ambassador in Mexico. And he was asked to allow the three men, the murderers of Trotsky. So you can relate the entire thing. Trotsky, Stalin. Stalin wanted to murder him. The first time failed. The first attempt failed. The, it was the second attempt on, on, on Trotsky. So they, so it was his duty to give them his issue, he says in their names. And they were allowed to go beyond the borders. And they disappeared. And Neruda was totally, you know, he was almost broken, collapsed. He has also written, not exactly about the whole thing, but at, the, at that time, how he was suffering. And it's all because of hegemony. So he's possibly, at this point of time, his heroism ceased to be heroism. Maybe only once in his life. And it is because of that superpower at that time. Because of the superpower. It was Stalin. So I feel that the superpower, the Indian army, here in Monipur, in Kashmir, since 1958, so it, it was a special act for military power. So he can torture him, he can rape a woman, or he can kill a boy, but he is not going to account for it. You cannot ask him, why did you kill him? You cannot ask him, why did, why did you rape her? No answer. And they don't have to answer. It, 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 this, is, this is the law. That, that's why it is draconian law. And this is what we have been saying that. So it, and it, 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 it was in use. It has been in use since 1958. ঘটনাটা <coughs> এই কবিতাটার কাছে আমি নিজেই খুব ঋণী আমি অনেক কষ্ট পেয়ে লিখেছিলাম কিন্তু খুব ঋণী এই কবিতাটা আমাকে গ্রীষ্মে নিয়ে গেছে এই কবিতাটা আমাকে দুবার আমেরিকা নিয়ে গেছে এই কবিতাটা আমাকে মণিপুরে নিয়ে গেছে অন্তত তিনবার আমার জীবনে এমন একটা ঘটনা ঘটেছে যে এই কবিতা ভালো কি মন্দ আমি জানি না কিন্তু এই কবিতা শুনে আমাকে একজন মণিপুরি অধ্যাপক তার তার ভিডিওটাও এখন পাওয়া যায় মণিপুরি অধ্যাপক আমাকে ইম্ফলে একটি কবি সম্মেলনের পর আমি শেষ কবিতা পড়ি পড়ার পরে সেই বৃদ্ধ অধ্যাপক মণিপুরি হাতে দুটো পাঁচশো টাকা নিয়ে এসে আমাকে দিচ্ছিলেন অ্যান্ড ইট মুভড মি টু টিয়ার্স মানে ওদের ওদের ওখানে এটা আছে মানে এক্সট্রিম কিছু ভালো লাগলে তারা পকেট থেকে টাকা নেয় আমরা কিছু মুজরো টুজরো এসব বলি এই লাখনো টাকনো ঘরানার কিন্তু ওখানে ওই রকম অভিজ্ঞতা আমার হয়নি বা গ্রীষ্মেও হয়েছে সে অন্য আরেকদিন হবে মণিপুরের মা নগ্ন উঠে দাঁড়ালো আমার মণিপুরের মা এই মায়ের দুচোখ থেকে চোখ পেয়েছি আশির নখ ভাষা পেয়েছি পেয়েছি সারে গামা নগ্ন উঠে দাঁড়ালো আমার মণিপুরের মা আর্মি জীব চলে গগন তলে আর্মি জীব সারে জাহা আসে বলে আর্মি জীপে মেয়েটি আছড়া আর্মি জীপে বোতাম খোলা চলে ও মেয়ে যদি ফিরেও আসে ঘরে ও মেয়ে যদি গগন তলে মরে পুলিশ মুছে দিয়েছে তার নাম বাড়ি কোথায় ইম্ফলের বাইরে কোনো গ্রাম এসব ঘটে রোজ কোথায় কোন তরুণী পড়ে আছে কোথায় তার অন্য বোন নিখোঁজ শুধু তাদের চুনুরি চলে গেছে কিন্তু আজ 
জুলাই মাসে হারালো বিপদ সীমা উঠে দাঁড়ান নগ্ন হয়ে স্তন্য দায় নিরা পৃথিবী দেখ মায়ের বুকে কখানা উপশিরা কেমন লাগে নগ্ন হলে তোর নিজের মা আসাম রাইফেলস যেই বন্ধ করে গেট যেখানে আমি ছিলাম সেই মায়ের তল পেট সেখান থেকে বেরিয়ে এলো এক গরম গঙ্গা মণিপুরের মায়েরা দিল মাকে নতুন সংজ্ঞা যেখানে আজ মায়েরা হাঁটে নগ্ন হয়ে মিছিলে জলনায়ক স্থলনায়ক তোমরা তখন কি করছিলে ভাবছ নাকি তোমার মা আজও আছেন পরমা পুরে গিয়েছেন পুরে গিয়েছেন সব মায়ের মধ্যে থাকা নিজের সেই বড় মা ইটস ভেরি ডিফিকাল্ট টু কনক্লুড দিস সেশন ওয়ে ইট হ্যাজ গন সো ইটস টাইম ফর মি টু থ্রো দ্য ফ্লোর ওপেন টু কোয়েশ্চেন শুভোদ্দা আফটার জাস্ট রিডিং a particular line which uh, keeps on coming back to me every time I read his poems. After reading, reading the poem Pitri Dugdho from Nokhotre Jama, there is one particular line saying, Kobi beche thake tar lekhae lekhae. So my respectful regards to Shubodda and the floor is open for you all to question him. Thank you, Ashokda and Chaitaladi, to give me the opportunity to be here and to, to put a question to respected Shubhodda, who is a poet of love and protest, just like uh, other poets of uh, Latin America. So my question is very simple, Shubhodda, in your first, first part of your lecture or session, you said that poet is a loner, as well as he's a fighter. You reiterated the lines of in a tacit way of Rabindranath Tagore, Bohu Janotar Maje Apur Vayaka. At the same time, you said uh, the shadow, the shadow of a poet, uh, where uh, he uh, tacitly reiterated, Shunil Gangopadhyay, Chaya Tobu Eto Behaya, Pot Shang Pot Chadena. But my question is that you are talking about the poetry against war. You are, uh, there was a quote from Mahmoud Darvis, and uh, when I was thinking about Chiso of Muse, who flew, flew from uh, Soviet Union and came to stay in Poland. And he said, what is poetry we cannot, which cannot save the nation or the people? So nowadays, what do you think that the, nowadays in this world, in this world of war, or the, Gaza, Ga, the, the war of Gaza, and few days back there was war, still is continuing in Ukraine. What do you think that the poets, nowadays poets are mm, confused to protest against war because we're talking about this subject? or? They're scared to write something against the power or uh, something else. We cannot hear their voice. I have three questions. Whether they're confused or they're scared to take actions or put their writings in their poems or uh, the third one, um, that uh, whether we cannot hear their voice. Uh, please, Shruta, if you can. Uh, thank you, Tanmoy. You know, a poet is going to war or going to front is one thing. And when a poet is in his bedroom, there is another war. In his own home, another war. One is just open and the other is not visible. And I think the second one, as he has also uh, pointed out, I think this is more difficult. Why? The poet that, who died, the poet who was killed, you know, recently, as I said. So he was, in a way, everybody was aware of the fact that a man, a young man, he wrote against uh, the Israeli occupation of Gaza. And so he wrote against it, knowing it pretty well that he is going to die. He has written in his diary that, yes, I know, I guess the time, any time, any moment, I will be killed. So he knew it. So there is a clear line of demarcation. So one is Homer, you know, just imagine 2,000 years ago or more, years ago that he went to front. You just think about 
many other poets, including Awen, who read Gitanjali in Warfield. So, so many poets went to, you know, during the time of the resistance, you know, in France, in Spain, also in Latin America. So, poets fighting war, which is visible, that is, that is a physical war going on. A non-physical war is also there, a psychological war. And sometimes a poet goes through both, as for example, Tagore. He was fighting against a lot of things inside him. He was fighting against the dark of the time. He was fighting against colonialism, against religion. I mean, the religion which I have talked about, the religion which, which was an abuse of religion. So he again and again invited Gandhi to Shantaniketan to sort it out. It was never done. Nationalism, you think about. And nationalism became so cruel at that time. And Tagore again and again alarmed the citizens of the country. And even Gandhi was also alarmed by him. So we have that, those great pictures of Gandhi and uh, Tagore sitting together face to face and, uh, you know, uh, we showcase them now, but it was a terrible time. The point is that a poet is a poet is a poet. He should know, and he knows, I believe, that he has to write his own stuff. He has to write his own poetry. He has to write his own poems. Either he has to fight or he has to succumb, and he cannot stoop so low to sail his soul. Because everybody, every poet knows the story of Dr. Faustus. Signing the soul in blood, in his own blood, stabbing his arm, writing in his blood, and signing, putting his signature, yes, you go. Taking the soul, it went away. So this metaphor, this is uh, a global metaphor for the world that we are living in at the time. I wrote so many years ago, so many hundred years ago. And just imagine, still it is so relevant. So I believe a poet, that soul is also very, very important. In the soul there is possibly the greatest pearl is there. That is human love, human sympathy, human touch. If you don't have human love, human sympathy, you will war, you will fight, you will destroy. A man is not a destroyer, but if he ceases to love and being loved, then he destroys. Yes. Uh, uh, Shodha talking about love. At the end of the session, I request him to read a poetry. And as a concluding part, Momita is adding, he is a uh, novelist and story writer, uh, to read the poetry, A Kiss and a Love. A kiss a dynamite. Act a chumon, act a dynamite. At the end of the session. Shubhada, we are truly captivated by your deliberation and our sincere kudos. Act a prashno korte chai, yet ami banglai korchi, kanu uttorta banglai shunte chai. Sheta hoche je apni asha kori egri korben je gato kuri bachore worldwide amon act a invention hoye chai, jeta kintu bola hoche century shopteke Game changing, that is internet. So, our Kobe Jibonji Poyta Lish Bachur, my Apnito internet er Agir Festa Dekachen, Porter Festa Dekachen. Ebong as a forerunner of Bengali as well as Indian poetry, Apnijakon worldwide travel coachin. Amishudu Jantechai, the internet Abishkar Hawar Pod, Jeta Shopteke Bodol Hueche mindset, Shetache world has become a truly global village, just a small village. So, I want to know that when we travel across the globe, after the inter, in, invention of the internet, the language of the whole in general, the trend, so, what is the difference between us? I want to know that I want to know that when the internet is coming, 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 the internet একটা সময় কবিতাতে অবস্কিউরিটি চর্চা যে কতটা বলবো এবং কতটা বলবো না মানে এর যে একটা দোলাচলতা ছিল 
তো সেখানে ইন্টারনেট আবিষ্কার হওয়ার পরে দেখা গেল একটা ইন জেনারেল একটা গ্লোবাল ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ তৈরি হয়ে গেছে তো এই জায়গাটা আপনাকে একটু আলোকপাত করতে চাইছি মানে জানতে চাইছি কারণ এটা আপনার চেয়ে ভালো উত্তর কেউ দিতে পারবে না যে গত কুড়ি বছরে আপনি ধরুন এত জায়গায় গেছেন এত জায়গায় কবিতা পড়েছেন এত ওয়ার্কশপ অ্যাটেন্ড করেছেন যে ইন জেনারেল কবিতার যে ভাষা দ্য গ্লোবাল ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ সেটা কি বদল হয়ে যায়নি রবীন্দ্রনাথ বেঁচে থাকলে পাগল হয়ে যেতেন এখন যা এখন যে ইন্টারনেটের গ্লোবাল যে জায়গাটা তৈরি হয়েছে খুব ভালো বলেছ শাশ্বত এটা একটা বিরাট ব্যাপার আমার তো মনে হচ্ছে এটাই ভবিষ্যৎ মানে ভবিষ্যৎ মানে এখনই আমরা আমাদের অভ্যেস মানে পড়া বই থেকে পড়া একটা প্রিন্টেড বুক সেটাকে পড়ার চাইতে লোকে মুহূর্তের মধ্যে বুঝে নেয় হাতের যদি মুঠোফোন থাকে সে তার সব কিছু ইন্টারনেটে পেয়ে যাচ্ছে কোনো অসুবিধাই তার নেই তো এই যে জায়গাটা তৈরি হয়েছে এই জায়গাটা সায়েন্স চেঞ্জ করে দিচ্ছে এই যে ডাক্তারবাবু বসে আছেন না আমাদের সামনে বিখ্যাত ডাক্তারবাবু রবীন্দ্র বসে আছেন ডক্টর রবীন্দ্র চক্রবর্তী ওর কাছেই গল্প শুনছিলাম কয়েকদিন আগে আমি ওর মানে উনি না থাকলে আমি এখানে বসে কথাই বলতে পারতাম না উনি বাঁচিয়ে রেখেছেন তো ওনার কাছে মাঝে মাঝে যায় প্রয়োজনই যেতে হয় অপ্রয়োজনও যায় গল্প শুনতে যায় ওর অভিজ্ঞতার কথা শুনতে যায় তো এখন তো উনি শেষ দিন আমাকে বললেন আমরা এখানে অপারেট করছি সার্জিক্যাল অপারেশন যে চলছে সেটা মুহূর্তের মধ্যে সেটার থেকে ইনপুট পাচ্ছেন আমেরিকা এবং ইউরোপ থেকে সঙ্গে সঙ্গে সেটা চলে আরও আমাদের তমালো বসে আছে ডাক্তার এখানে আরও অনেকে আছেন হয়তো তো তারা সঙ্গে সঙ্গে পেয়ে যাচ্ছেন এই যে ইন্টারনেট যেমন ডাক্তারিতে সায়েন্সে মানে কি শুধু সব সম্ভবত এই মুহূর্তে ভারত ইয়েতে চাঁদে পাঠালো এটা কি ইন্টারনেট ছাড়া সম্ভবত অসম্ভব সুতরাং ইন্টারনেটের জায়গাটা শুধু বিজ্ঞান টেকনোলজি মানুষের জ্ঞান এই সব ছাড়াও কবিতার মতো সবচেয়ে অপ্রয়োজনীয় জিনিস পৃথিবীতে সেই অপ্রয়োজনীয় জিনিস সেটাও কিন্তু ইন্টারনেট নির্ভর হয়ে গেছে এখন ইন্টারনেট ছাড়া কোনো গতি নেই কবিতাই হোক গল্প উপন্যাস হোক এই যে মৌমিতারা উপন্যাস লেখে হ্যাঁ বড় বড় উপন্যাস লেখে সে তো এখন ইন্টারনেটের জন্য ই বুক হয়ে যাচ্ছে বিভিন্ন জায়গায় অশোকের এত উপন্যাস আছে ওরা তো সব ওদের লেখালেখিও এখন বিভিন্ন জায়গায় পাওয়া যায় আমি তো ই বুকে অনেক সময় পড়ে নিই যে উপন্যাসগুলো এখানে পাওয়া সম্ভব নয় সুতরাং সেই জায়গাটা কিন্তু তৈরি হয়ে গেছে একটা মানে আমাদেরকে আমি জানি না কি হতে চলেছে এর পরে এলেন মাস্ক যা দেখে দেখে যা হুঙ্কার দিচ্ছে হ্যাঁ মানে এই কদিন আগে আর একটা ভিডিও ছেড়েছে মানে এই কিছুদিন আগে বললো যে আপনার ভাবো নিউ ইয়র্ক টাইমস হেডলাইন আমি দেখলাম দেখে চমকে গেলাম নিউ ইয়র্ক টাইমস তো ওরা বিনা পয়সায় আমাকে পাঠায় আমাকে পাঠায় মানে যে কোনো লোককেই পাঠাবে তাতে এলেন মাস্ক বলেছিলেন যে ইয়েস ইট ইস গোয়িং টু রুইন হিউম্যান সিভিলাইজেশন সব সবচেয়ে বড় এ আই ইন্ডাস্ট্রির স্পন্সার করেছেন এলেন মাস্ক এই ইন্ডাস্ট্রিতে সবচেয়ে বেশি টাকা লগ্নি করেছেন এলেন মাস্ক অরিজিনালি তো আইরিশ আইরিশদের এসব ব্যাপারে সাংঘাতিক বুদ্ধি হয় আইরিশ এবং ইহুদিদের এসব ব্যাপারে সাংঘাতিক বুদ্ধি হয় আইরিশ সাহিত্যিকদের এত বড় বুদ্ধি যে ব্রিটিশ রাজত্বকে একেবারে তছনছ করে দিয়ে এই সেঞ্চুরিতে সে ডাব্লু বি ইয়েটস বানাস থেকে শুরু করে জেমস জয়েস থেকে শুরু করে ডাবলিনটা হয়ে উঠল ইউকের আসল রাজধানী তা না যদি তাকিয়ে দেখো ইংরেজরা তো লিখতে পারিনি একশো বছর গত একশো বছরে লিখেছে আইরিশরা আর ভারতীয়রা ইংরেজিতে এখন তো ভারতীয়দেরই সবচেয়ে বড় ব্যবসা মানে ইংরেজি সাহিত্যে এখন সবচেয়ে বড় জায়গাটা ভারতীয়রা নিয়েছে ভারতীয় মানে ভারতীয় বংশোদ্ভূত অফ ইন্ডিয়া নো রিচেন তো সেই দিক থেকে আমার তো মনে হয় যে যেহেতু ইন্টারনেটটা এখন অবধারিতভাবে এসে গেছে এবং এআই এসে গেছে সুতরাং আমার মনে হয় এটাই ভবিষ্যৎ এবং কী যে হবে এটা কেউ বলতে পারে না থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাছ আই থিঙ্ক ইন এডিশন টু হোয়াট শাশ্বত আস্ট আই থিঙ্ক দেয়ার ইজ এ দেয়ার ইজ এ রিয়ালি 
a huge problem is going to come up. And as you said very rightly, very appropriately, is AI. And we all know that today musicians, there is no musician. You can start singing a song. Tomorrow you can be Ayar Rahman, no problem at all. Yeah, so that voice can be changed and the whole lyric can be changed. And I'm sure you'll not be surprised that day is not too far away when even a poetry can be driven by AI. Some sort of line will be, com will coming, will be coming from uh, Subhad Sarkar, some line, somebody else, and then a new poet. And yeah. you don't know who is the actual poet. And then problem is the people, <laughs> or so-called quote-unquote, so-called the market, will be driven by those kind of composition, not kind of composition or thought process what Subhad Sarkar is talking today. It's an incredible evening. Incredible evening, unbelievable. I got a, just a quick question, and uh, that is, uh, as you said very rightly, and I think you said very rightly that the loneliness and loan, and uh, one is loneliness, another, another one is kind of loan, loan alone. No, no, something else. You said something else. Loan, no, not loan alone. You said loneliness and? No, uh, stand alone, something like that. And of course, solitude. Solitude is a combination of your loneliness and the environment. Yeah. So when two are together and both are silent, that is solitude. And the question is, I think the poets, as you said, I think you mentioned so rightly that duality. And this evening is a kind of a heroism versus uh, the hegemony is a kind of dualism. The, um, try to understand a, a, a man is standing in a crossroad. And in the crossroad, there are tra the traffic from all four different roads. So naturally, he's scared. He's scared. People who are coming from different crossroads, they are scared. And he puts something that is scared. But the poet is a character. He is also standing in the crossroad. And he's not scared. Yeah. His role is to guide that traffic from different sides. And what are your thoughts, sir, about this? role of a poet in a crossroad. Uh, sir, one, one thing that what he was talking about on Shashwato and what Shubhada replied uh, regarding artificial intelligence and chat GPT. I, I, I still I want to say one thing that poetry is a superpower because it was, it was written in the year 1969. All of you know about the song uh, Hotel California. There was a line, striking line in the year 1969 where the prisoners of our own device this happened. That is, the, that is the beauty of the poetry. That is the beauty of the song. It was written earlier. This evening you write one morning chat, GPT changed the whole thing. Yes. 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 It's a question. It's, 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 uh, um, it's a bit of a question. You might find personal. Please don't answer it. Please. You know, you have. Sorry. You have um, said more than once this evening that you have been writing po uh, poetry for over 40 years, 45, 40. Um, you know, I read somewhere your writing saying that, and I quote uh, uh, from memory, and my, I'm an old man. <laughs> uh, jodi, uh, jodi, uh, jodi Gujarat na hutu. Jodi, uh, jodi 9 11 na hoto, jodi nondigram na hoto, ami kovita liktam na. So, Absolutely. which particular event had triggered your initiation into this art? In fact, you have inspired me by quoting me and correctly quoting me. This is correctly, this is, this is from the blurb of a book of a book of poems, and you have correctly quoted me, I am, I, I, I am honored. The answer is, the, not the answer, the mm, response to uh, your uh, uh, quote and your question, is that I still believe, you know, as I just said a minute before, suppose there is no nondigram. No 9-11, no Gujarat, no Ayodhya. But there is one thing. In, we are talking about AI. We are talking about human memory, human intelligence. 
I am quoting another poet as a response to you. It was the German poet, Werner Maria Rilke. He said, you forget war, you forget strife, you forget the pain of human civilization. Suppose you were in a jail behind the bar. You are not going to write? You delve deep down into your memory. Memory of your lost childhood. Memory of sufferings that you had in your childhood. And that's something great. So I think what I said, okay, but still I believe that in the moment of love, in the moment of frustration, in the moment of crisis, individual crisis, your individual crisis is somehow, in one way or another, is connected with 9-11, is connected with the war which is now taking place. In one way or another, it is connected with the crisis of other big events of the world. So poetry is a kind of, it makes a summary. It chooses only one or two metaphors, similes, and they become the most violent things. Just one image, one simile, one metaphor from the entire history of that part of the world. And it gives you a kind of initiation into a new kind of discovery, a new kind of finding. So I personally believe what I say to still it is, I stand by it. And I believe that, you know, if, if I am absolutely quiet, if I am, I am not reacting to what is happening now, if I didn't write the poster yesterday, what I wrote, some of, some of you told me when I just came that the yesterday posted it, and I said that I, 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 I felt that I was going through a fire. I just uh, said this to uh, Dr. Robin Chakraborty. Uh, he just told me that, yes, uh, he, just, he just told me that, you know, both of them, they told me that uh, the, the, the post edit that you have written was, was really something terrible. So I, I believe that, you know, uh, there is war or no war. There is 9-11 or no 9-11. But there is... There is rain outside. There is sunlight at the beginning of the day. And there is a sunset at the back. And there is love. You can connect your love with the rest of the world. And finally it is love that will triumph over all bad elements. Thank you. It's time for me now to request uh, our chair, respected Sri Parthuranjan Dash, to please offer the vote of thanks. Shubhada, many thanks. I am very thankful. I will only catch you miss Kola. I am sorry. I am artificial intelligence. Niye actor. I am not capable to say. This is a question. No, actor observation. সেটা হচ্ছে কুড়ি বছর আগে একটা সফটওয়্যার ডেভেলপমেন্ট করার চেষ্টা হচ্ছিল ইন্টারন্যাশনালি যে আর্কিটেক্টদের রিপ্লেস করা যায় কি না কারণ একটা বাড়ির জমি আছে তার টেকনিক্যাল ডেটা আছে একজন ক্লায়েন্ট কি চায় সেটাও আছে তো আমাদের একটা মানুষের কি দরকার এটা একটা কম্পিউটার সিস্টেমে ফিড করলে বোধ হয় একটা খুব সুন্দর ডিজাইন বেরিয়ে যাবে চেষ্টাও হয়েছিল আমাদের কলকাতাতেও হয়েছে বিদেশেও হয়েছে একটা জায়গায় ফেল করে গেল সেটা হচ্ছে ইমোশনের অভাব ওইখানে বোধ হয় করে যাচ্ছে যে ইমোশনটা তারা কখনো দিনই হয়তো আনতে পারবেন না অন্য যে কোনো প্যারামিটার আছে তার মধ্যে একটা স্ট্যান্ডার্ড জিনিস প্রডিউস করবে ইমোশনের অভাবটা কিন্তু থেকে যাবে এখানে একটা গল্প খুব ইন্টারেস্টিং আমি সবার সঙ্গে শেয়ার করতে চাই সেটা হচ্ছে সিডনি অপেরা হাউস যখন হয় অস্ট্রেলিয়াতে ইট ওয়াজ অ্যান ইন্টারন্যাশনাল কম্পিটিশান অস্ট্রেলিয়ান গভর্নমেন্ট ডিজাইন ব্রিফ দিয়ে টিয়ে যে অপের হাউস চায় কোথায় হয় তার সাইট কীরকম কত বড় সাইট সব দিয়ে বলেছিল যে উই ওয়ান্ট আর তাজমহল ফর অস্ট্রেলিয়া খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট কথা এবার চেয়ারম্যান অফ জুরি ছিলেন আমেরিকান আর্কিটেক্ট 
খুব মানে ব্রিলিয়ান্ট আর্কিটেক্ট পঁয়ত্রিশ বছরে মারা যান এয়ারো সারিনেন বলে সারিনেনকে ওনারা ইনভাইট করলেন সারিনেন আমেরিকা থেকে উড়ে গেলেন সিডনিতে তো অস্ট্রেলিয়ার আর্কিটেক্টরা বললেন যে আপনার তো এত সময় হবে না আমরা প্রায় কুড়ি হাজার এন্ট্রি পেয়েছি তো আপনার দেখার জন্য আমরা দু তিনশো ভালো এন্ট্রি খুঁজে রেখেছি তার মধ্যে থেকে আপনি ফার্স্ট প্রাইজ চুজ করে দিন এরও সারি নেন সবগুলো দেখলেন সবাই নাম করা আর্কিটেক্ট জাপান থেকে ইউএসএ থেকে ইউরোপ থেকে উনি বললেন যে আপনি এই একশোটার মধ্যে যে কোনো বিল্ডিং যদি করেন ইউ উইল গেট এ ব্রিলিয়ান্ট অপেরা হাউস তাজমহল হবে না আপনারা যে চেয়েছিলেন যে বিমানটা তাজমহল ফর অস্ট্রেলিয়া তাজমহল দেখলে যেমন ইন্ডিয়ার কথা মনে পড়ে এই বাড়িটা দেখে কিন্তু এ তো পৃথিবীর যে কোনো জায়গা হতে পারে টেকনিক্যালি পারফেক্ট খুব সুন্দর দেখতে বড় বড় আর্কিটেকচার করেছে কেন্দ্র তাঙ্গে করেছিলেন জাপান থেকে আরও অনেকে করেছিলেন বললেন প্রত্যেকটা দারুণ অপেরা হাউস হবে তাজমহল হবে না উনি বললেন যে আপনারা যেগুলো রিজেক্ট করেছেন আমাকে দেখান তখন ওরা খুঁজতে খুঁজতে দেখল যে একজন ডেনমার্কের একজন ডেনিশ আর্কিটেক্ট জন আটজার নামে পাগল লোক সে পাগলের মতোই এন্ট্রি দিয়েছে একটা মডেল দিয়েছে ওরকম জাহাজের নৌকোর পাল তোলার মতো এবং কিছু কাগজে কিছু খুব রাফ স্কেচ কোনো ফিনিশ ড্রয়িং নেই কিচ্ছু নেই মানে কলেজেও হয়তো ছুঁড়ে ফেলে দিত সারিনেন বললো এইটা হবে এইটা কিন্তু আপনাদের ভিজনের সঙ্গে ম্যাচ করছে দিস উইল বি তাজমহল ফর ইন্ডিয়া বললো এটাকে দাঁড় করাবো কী করে মানে তখন আমি সিক্সটিজের কথা বলছি বলো দাঁড় করাতে হবে আপনারা তো বলে দিয়েছেন উই ওয়ান্টা তাজমহল ফর অস্ট্রেলিয়া অন্য কোনো বাড়ি কিন্তু এটা স্যাটিসফাই করছে না তখন ইংল্যান্ড থেকে তখনকার দিনে এখনও ওয়ান অফ দি বেস্ট স্ট্রাকচারাল ইঞ্জিনিয়ার আভে অরূপ বলে তাকে ডাকা হলো জন আটজনকে ডাকা হলো উনি বললেন যে আপনি যে এরকম পাগলের মতো করেছেন এ তো ধার করানো যাবে না এ তো খানিকটা চেঞ্জ করতে হবে তো জন আটজন খুব অসন্তুষ্ট হলেন ঝগড়াঝাটি করলেন এবং মাঝপথে কাজটা ছেড়ে দিয়েও চলে গেলেন কাজটা বহুদিন পড়ে ছিল কিন্তু তারপরে অনেক কষ্টে একটু চেঞ্জ করে ওটাকে দাঁড় করিয়েছে এবং যা দাঁড় করেছে আমরা তো জানি সিডনি অপেরা হাউস দেখুন ওটা সত্যি কিন্তু অস্ট্রেলিয়াকে সিম্বলাইজ করে এবং সারিনেন ওই একটা কথা বলেছিলেন যে তোমাকে আর্কিটেক্টের ইমোশানটাকে রেসপেক্ট করতে হবে উনি যে জিনিসটা দিয়েছেন আর কেউ দেয়নি সবাই টেকনিক্যালি পারফেক্ট সেইটার জায়গায় আমার মনে হয় এআই কিন্তু হেরে যাচ্ছে এখন এবং বোধহয় যাবেও সুভদ্রা ভীষণ আপনাকে ধন্যবাদ আপনি এখানে আসার জন্য আশা করি পরে আরও আসবেন এবং আপনাদেরও ধন্যবাদ যে আপনারা এসছেন এরও একটা প্রোগ্রামে আমরা এই পাশের ঘরটা রেডি করছি আশা করি কয়েক মাস বাদে আপনাদের এরকম এনভায়রনমেন্টে আর ডাকবো না এবং সুভদ্রাকে ডাকবো হয়তো পাশের ঘরে যখন তৈরি হয়ে গেলে আরও বেটার এনভায়রনমেন্টে আরও আরও ভালোভাবে ওনার কথা আমরা শুনতে পারবো থ্যাংক ইউ হ্যাঁ নন্দনের পরে আমি এখন লড়ে যাচ্ছি ওদের বলে যাচ্ছি যে ইম্প্রুভ করবেন না যা ছিল তাই রাখুন